Hi, my name is Kyle and I have bladder cancer. Uh, this is the fourth in a series of videos where I talk about um, my experience with cancer and its treatment. Um, in this fourth video, I'll be talking about uh, my second uh, TURB, the uh, transurethral resection of bladder tumor. Um, uh, since this uh, is, is my second of those operations, uh, if you haven't seen the, the first video where I talk about my first term, uh, you, you'll want to start from that video to get the whole story. Uh, during my second term uh, operation, I actually had two procedures performed. Uh, the first was implanting a, a port uh, to use during chemotherapy uh, infusions, and then the second was the actual TURB itself. Um, so let's talk about the port. Um, uh, in my case, it's used to uh, uh, infuse the the chemotherapy drugs. Um, it was optional. You can you can receive chemo infusions through a normal IV um, in your arm, let's say. Um, but I chose to get the port because I was going to be under general anesthesia anyway, so it really wasn't a burden to get it uh, implanted. Um, and I'd heard so many stories from uh, relatives and people online who had a port um, and recommended it strongly uh, for its uh, convenience. Um, my port is in my chest. Uh, it's right, I can feel it, it's right here. Um, it's under the skin. Uh, uh, it, it, uh, it bulges out from the skin, maybe um, a quarter inch, maybe. Um, uh, so the port itself is here, and I've got two little scars here and here. Um, that's the only drawback I've heard to having a port is is the scarring. Uh, so I think especially for women who wear um, lower cut shirts, they don't want the scar. Um, but in my case, you know, it was a no brainer for me. Um, so it was it was performed. Uh, during my, my term, uh, while I was under general anesthesia, um, when, I, when I woke up from the anesthesia, it was a little bit tender. Um, the first day it was hard to, to actually reach across like this, because I could feel... Uh, I think that was just, it was just like tender on the surface is what I was feeling. Um, and then after the first day, uh, really the only pain I had from the port was when I forgot that I had it, and I went to scratch or I rubbed against it. Um, and it was still tender. Um, I had a, a really large padded dressing that took up most of my chest um, on my left side. Uh, and that dressing had to stay on for about 48 hours. Um, and then I could take it off. Uh, once I took it off, I found there was uh, stary strips, like little pieces of tape, that were holding um, the... Uh, uh, the incisions together, uh, and the doctor said to to leave those on until they fell off by themselves. Uh, so I think I had mine on for about two weeks, um, and they weren't falling off. So when I went to get chemo, the the nurses pulled them pulled them off. Um, I think I've had it for about a month now, and I really I forget that I have it sometimes. Um, the only time I really feel it is when I'm showering and I'm trying to clean that area and I can feel it bulging out. Uh, so it really doesn't cause me any discomfort. Uh, it's no inconvenience to me to have it. Uh, so it's... I'm glad that I did it. The second procedure in the same operation was the, the TURB. Um, that's a, a transurethral resection of bladder tumor. Um, the point of that procedure was to to reduce the mass of my my primary tumor, uh, my T2 tumor, and also to remove the uh, the CIS tumor um, that the doctor found uh, when he was um, doing a biopsy of the of the primary tumor. Um, because that CIS tumor was uh, next to my uh, ureter, um, the surgeon had to insert a um, a stent in my ureter between my kidney and my bladder. Um, uh, so that's that's one difference between um, this term and the previous term. 
Um, another major difference is uh, this turb actually uh, included an overnight stay in the hospital. Um, and I'm glad I did because this time I had some significant pain uh, when I woke up and through the night. Um, I had uh, really bad bladder spasms uh, that was causing um, some pain and just lots of pain in my bladder area for, for hours uh, after the procedure. Um, uh, it's hard to distinguish bladder pain from uh, I guess I would say intestinal pain or like pain in your uh, in your colon um, like you have to go to the bathroom because that area is so close together and I wasn't really used to feeling bladder pain even in my previous turb I, I really didn't have much pain uh, so this time when I when I woke up and I felt that pain my immediate reaction was like I gotta go to the bathroom right now and I remember just like sitting on the toilet and crying because it, it hurt so bad and I, I wasn't able to go to the bathroom because I just woke up from general anesthesia, so my, you know, intestines weren't really working yet. Uh, so that was, that was surprising, that amount of pain. Um, so I, I was on Vicodin um, a lot at the hospital, um, constantly. Um, and I was glad I was there because the nurses were able to take care of me. Um, I think I got a suppository at one point to, to reduce the bladder spasms because I couldn't I couldn't take any more Vicodin, um, and they gave me a Benadryl at one point just to put me to sleep because I I was hurting so bad. And the Benadryl actually helped a lot. I, I went to sleep and I was able to sleep, and when I woke up the pain was uh, less significant. Um, I later learned that that pain is is probably wasn't from the the actual tumor resection, but it was probably actually from the stent. Um, so that's, that's probably why I felt that pain in the second operation, and I didn't in the first operation. So after the 24-hour the stay in the hospital, um, I left with uh, a catheter, um, just like the catheter that I had the time before, um, except this time I didn't have any uh, visible blood clots. Um, and in fact, overall, I had a lot less bleeding this time than the previous time. Um, I told the doctor that uh, it's a different, I, I had a different surgeon this time. Um, and I told this surgeon that I had significant clotting problems the last time. So he said he would make sure to, uh, to cauterize everything well. And that, that seemed to work because I had a lot less bleeding and no, no clotting problems. And the catheter never got clogged and didn't need uh, irrigation. Um, then I got the catheter out uh, five days later, um, and I immediately noticed side effects from the stent. Um, the last time I got a catheter out, I was I was back to normal or mostly normal, just some, some burning um, within a couple of days. But this time I, I had constant pain uh, in my bladder uh, and also in my kidneys. Um, uh, I also had uh, increased. Uh, like urges to go to the bathroom and I, I was going to the bathroom really frequently like maybe every hour um, and after I'd pee like five minutes later I felt like I had to pee again um, and then when I would urinate I get really strong uh, pain in my kidney uh, so I have a ureter in my left uh, the, the stent in my left ureter uh, and when I pee I get strong kidney pain in my left kidney um, this pain kind of on my side and towards my back on the left side. Uh, so I did some research on that and um, the the stent is a tube that goes um, from inside the kidney um, to inside the bladder uh, and it's just a hollow tube um, so uh, when the bladder contracts to squeeze out the urine um, some of the urine goes out the urethra and then some of the urine actually goes up um, back up into the kidney um, and that the kidneys don't like that uh, and it that's what causes the pain um, so in your in your ureter there's a valve that um, that prevents that and then if you when you insert the stent uh, it defeats that valve 
Um, and you just get a lot of urine going up into the kidney when you pee. Uh, so that was, that was surprising, um, but it's completely normal when you have a stent. Uh, I talked to the urologist and he confirmed. Um, that actually, that went away um, maybe a week later. So it was, it was pretty strong pain um, when I had it. Like I had to brace myself against the wall because it hurt a lot. Uh, to pee every time. Um, it was, uh, I could lessen the pain if I um, peed more frequently, which wasn't a problem because I was peeing all the time. Um, but if I, if I managed to fill up my bladder, then it would hurt a lot. Uh, so they, so that was new, um, that, that kind of pain was new from this, this procedure. Um, Another difference is they gave me um, antibiotics uh, to help with um, some chest congestion that I had. Uh, um, they wanted to clear that up before I went into chemo. Um, and they also have to give me antibiotics to prevent um, urinary tract infections from the catheter. Uh, so last time I was on Bactrim, and that, that didn't really have any much effect on me. Um, much side effects, uh, but this time I was on Augmentin, and that completely wrecked my intestines. Um, so I had I had diarrhea um, for the entire time that I had the catheter in, and uh, and for at least a month afterwards. In fact, I'm I, up until I started chemo, uh, and then of course the chemo causes diarrhea too. Um, so. Augmentin wasn't very good, uh, for me at least. Um, I guess it was kind of helpful to have diarrhea when I had the catheter in. It's better than being constipated. Uh, but it lasted a long time. Uh, so I wouldn't recommend Augmentin, unless you have to go on it. Uh, so another di difference with, with this procedure, um, uh, when I got the catheter out the last time, I didn't have any problems peeing. Um, this time I had a little bit of a problem. Uh, there was there was some tearing of my uh, uh, the opening um, of my urethra, um, and once I got the catheter out, that was that was trying to heal, and it was a bit swollen, and it was um, kind of felt like it was trying to to heal closed. Uh, so I'd, I'd go to pee and. Um, my stream wasn't strong, and then that would cause urine to, to back up into my kidney, and then that hurt a lot. Um, so, uh, so for several days after I got the catheter out, I would, uh, before I would urinate, I would soak a uh, paper towel and, and some hot water, and then put it over my urethra to, to uh, loosen any blood clots that I might have on the outside of the uh, the opening of the urethra, and then just kind of open it with my hands um, to make sure that it would open when I went to pee. Uh, and that made it um, easier to pee, and it was I was less likely to have kidney pain if I did that. So another difference with this, uh, this operation was um, the stent pain that I mentioned several times. Um, that was really rough. Uh, it was, it was maybe a four on my pain scale. Um, so it wasn't like debilitating pain, but the problem was that it was constant. Um, it just all the time it hurt. Um, all the time it felt like I had to pee, uh, and I, I just, you know, it just caused me to kind of shut down, and I just. Um, I tried to just sleep a lot because it hurt so much. In fact, I slept right through Christmas Christmas Day um, because I was having so much pain uh, in my bladder. Um, Vicodin, I was... I, um, the last operation, I didn't have to take Vicodin at all. Um, this time, I, I was I was taking Vicodin for the, for the bladder pain. Um, and it would help. It would help for a couple hours, but then uh, it would come back. So... I'd be good for a couple hours, and then for a couple hours I'd be in pain. 
um, and I couldn't take the Vicodin until four hours later. Uh, so I mentioned that to my oncologist, and my oncologist called my urologist and got my urologist to put me on uh, Detrol, LA, and Flomax um, to reduce bladder spasms. And I didn't think I was having bladder spasms, but um, it definitely did um, reduce my, my frequency of urination um, and my urge to urinate. Uh, and I think it probably reduced just general irritation uh, in my bladder. So um, I think those two things coupled together did they did um, ease the pain a lot. Um, I found that um, I had less pain if I would keep my bladder kind of full um, as opposed to at least completely empty like it was before. Uh, so peeing less often um, helped. Uh, I also learned that um, uh, if I slept on my, I normally sleep on my side, um, but if I sleep on my back, uh, I could feel the stent less. Uh, if I sleep on my side, I can kind of feel it pulling, um, pulling my bladder and also pulling my kidney. Uh, so I think that was causing irritation. So if I sleep on my back, then I have less irritation. So um, doing that uh, and taking these, um, taking this Detrol and Flomax um, helped the pain a lot. And it was maybe uh, maybe about a month. I felt the stent pain for maybe about a month, um, and then it got it got better to the point that I could stop taking. Uh, the pain meds, and in general, unless I do the wrong thing now, um, I really don't feel the stent like I did before. Before I could, I could always tell it was there. Uh, now it's starting to get better about a month later. Um, it was bad enough that at one point I called my urologist to see if I could ever remove. Like a week later, I was like, I, I was ready to get it out. Um, the plan is to to leave that stent in until I have my bladder surgery um, to remove my bladder, uh, and that's that's about um, well four or five months later. So I didn't want to have that stent in for for four months. Um, so I called my urologist to see if I can get it removed, and he said I can't. Uh, it's you know it's it's holding my it's holding my ureter open and keeping my kidney functioning, so it's important. Uh, so I'm glad the pain is, has subsided because it was, it was a significant issue for me when I was having it. So my lessons learned from, from, from this second TURB operation. Um, uh, first off, if you're going to receive chemotherapy, get a port um, and, and have it uh, implanted while you're under uh, general anesthesia for one of your TURBs. Uh, I I think ha having had one, I think it's a no-brainer. Just just unless you're like super concerned about showing scars on your chest, um, <coughs> and you'd rather have wrecked veins in your arms uh, than a couple little scars in your chest, then you know I, I'd get a port. Uh, Second, if you if you have if you if you have to have a stent uh, in your ureter, um, probably due to where your tumor was located. If it's located close to a ureter, you're probably going to have to have a stent. Um, then, be ready for some discomfort and some pain. Um, uh, Detrol and Flomax worked for me. Um, and also in figuring out how to sleep uh, so I so I don't feel the stent uh, I think also helped uh, and staying hydrated definitely helps and you'll probably have to do that anyway uh, if you've got bladder cancer you, know, you get used to having a bottle of water next to you all the time um, uh, and also um, 
having an overnight stay with with this second turb helped me a lot. Um, I wish I had done that the first time. I didn't even know I. It wasn't it wasn't an option that was presented to me the first time, uh, but knowing what I know now, I would have insisted upon it. Uh, uh, because I think if I had stayed overnight during the first term, I would have had a lot less problems with um, blood and blood clotting uh, because they would have seen how much blood was in my urine. And I was having clots from, from day one. Um, so consider an overnight stay uh, um, with your turb. It, it certainly worked out for me.